media demo. Hello and welcome to ibbusinessandmanagement.com. I'm Mr. Burton. Today we'll be running through 3.5 financial accounts, our second installment here. Last time we looked at the income statement and today we'll be looking at the balance sheet. I hope you're watching this on ibbusinessandmanagement.com. There's a lot of additional information, a few short videos which help clarify a few of the tricky concepts around balance sheets. ibbusinessandmanagement.com, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know and learn for the IB Business and Management course. Okay, let's get going. I hope you learned something today. What is a balance sheet? Critical question. Let's answer it. A balance sheet is a statement of net worth. It's broken up into three sections, assets, liabilities, and equity. A equals L plus E. Meet Joe. Joe goes to the bank and gets a small business loan. The bank gives him cash. On the balance sheet, his liabilities increase by the size of the loan and his assets increase by the same amount. The balance sheet remains in balance. Joe uses the cash to buy a truck and start his own pizza delivery service. His cash assets decrease, but that's balanced by an increase in his other assets, a new truck. As Joe delivers pizza, the profits are recorded in the balance sheet as retained earnings in the equity section of the balance sheet. The cash from his profit is recorded in the assets section, balancing out. Every month, Joe makes a payment against his loan. He reduces his liabilities by the amount of the payment, and his cash is reduced by the same amount. To find out his business's worth, Joe subtracts liabilities from his assets. This equals the net worth of his business. A nice little explanation there from Investopedia as always. Very easy to understand. Assets, liability and equity. Three parts to the balance sheet. Show me. Here we've got the standard format as required, as presented in IB Business and Management exams. Uh, fixed assets, um, current assets, current liabilities, net assets and capital employed. You'll be given this information um, in exams to help you prepare it. So in this case, knowing the structure is not as important as it was for the income statement, cash flow statements, etc, etc. This one is actually presented to you. Okay, balance sheets. Now these are one of the key financial statements that companies are legally required to produce. Why are they legally required to produce it? Because the balance sheet tells no lies. You know what's going on with the company if you have access to its balance sheet. It is a snapshot, so it's that picture in time. Typically a balance sheet is produced for a year, so we get a look at what has happened at the end, or where the business is, is not what's happened, but where the business is at the end of that time period when they're required to produce the balance sheet. Okay, it's a snapshot financial document showing a firm's, firm's financial information at a specific date. It shows where a firm's money has come from in terms of capital and liabilities and what it's been spent on, so assets. A balance sheet because it must balance funnily enough. It shows the firm's sources of finance and this is capital employed. I hope you're taking notes here. It shows the firm's sources of finance. This is capital employed and where that money's been spent and that's assets employed. Where a firm's money has come from, capital and liabilities and what it's been spent on, assets. And all this helps ensure that all monies within the organization are properly accounted for shareholders know that their 
money that firms assets are not being stashed away in the managing director's pocket or for personal gain so we just have to know things like capital employed assets employed capital liabilities and assets key terminology here when looking at balance sheet let's have a look at assets they're divvied up into a few types we'll define them to start with assets are items owned by or owed to a business and hold a monetary value such as cash or building now they can be items that are owed to a business this is in terms of their debtors so you make a sale on credit that person who owes you money is an asset assets we divide up into two parts in the balance sheet current assets key term or key time period here 12 months 12 months if it's a less 12 months or less we're talking about a current asset so cash or any liquid asset that's likely to be turned into cash within 12 months our three main types are cash debtors and stocks other side fixed assets and again that 12 month period is key this time a fixed asset is defined as being 12 months or more so any asset that's purchased for business use rather than for selling and it's likely to last for 12 or more months we have got our tangible assets the tangible fixed assets are just one of our type of fixed assets now these are the most common the most easy to identify so these are physical fixed assets such as equipment machinery property ie land and buildings fixtures and fittings and motor vehicles apart from land and buildings tangible fixed assets will tend to depreciate that means they fall in value depreciate fall in value over time another type of fixed asset to look for on the balance sheet intangible fixed assets a non-physical fixed asset you can't touch them they're not there they're smoke and mirrors non-physical fixed assets such as brand names goodwill trademarks copyrights and patents and which were, may well prove to be the firm's most valuable assets although it's very very difficult to place a value on intangible assets and in most cases most cases businesses won't actually go out there and put their brand name on the balance sheet even though it is an intangible asset it's generating money for the firm it won't appear on the balance sheet typically unless the brand the goodwill the trademarks copyrights and patents have actually been purchased from another business when the, another business has been taken over so another business has been acquired the tangible and, and intangible and last but not least investments and we're talking about financial investments that the firm has made a medium to long-term financial investments that the business has so businesses can hold shares they can hold debentures in other companies and this may generate some short-term income for the firm such as dividend or interest payments and investments are held for long-standing strategic reasons it's great to have some investments there to be able to sell if an immediate opportunity arises a business can jump in and grab that opportunity kind of the opposite of assets is liabilities this is something that the business is going to owe we don't define it as such we define it as being a legal obligation of a business to repay its lenders or suppliers at a later date again the two types is current and long term current liabilities that 12 month term is key again so debts that must be settled within one year of the balance sheet date for example tax to the government overdraft repayments and loan interest on the other side we're talking longer than 12 months so debts due to be repaid after 12 months and we're talking about long-term sources of borrowing and finance here things like debentures mortgages and bank loans
capital and reserves the final key section of the balance sheet what's this all about two parts to it we've got owners equity if we're talking about partnerships and sole traders or shareholders funds in the case of limited liabilities comp limited liability companies both public and private right. under capital and reserves it's either going to be owners equity or shareholders fund share capital defined the amount of money raised through the sale of shares when first sold so that's key when first sold when they were first issued and purchased not the current market value share capital amount of money raised through the sale of shares initially or subsequently but at the value of when they were purchased not the current market value retain profit that's the amount of net profit after interest tax and dividends that have been paid how much the business keeps for themselves for future investment or as a buffer in case of bad times we had a look at retained profit in our income statement the appropriations account and reserves uh, this is retained profit but it's retained profit from previous years this is what it looks like the balance sheet the structure everything explained this should be going in your notes if we have a look at a few key things here we can see that net assets is equal to fixed assets plus working capital and we know from our working capital section that that is current assets minus current liabilities net assets down the bottom part we can see is equal to long-term liabilities and owners equity this is where the whole thing balances net assets must equal capital employed if that doesn't happen we haven't got a balance sheet because the thing does not balance we can also have a look at owners equity in terms of that being measured as net assets minus long-term liabilities just quickly looking at the structure here we start with our assets we start with our fixed assets remember those are those assets which are being kept for, for a business they're not going to be sold for 12 months or more intangible or tangible are recorded here current assets those three key things that keep propping up um, stocks debtors and cash current liabilities creditors and short-term loans if we subtract current liabilities from current assets we have our net current assets and we know that net current assets minus current liabilities is also termed working capital okay and if we take our assets and we add or subtract our net current assets we have got our net assets so we can think of that as being our total assets that's one side of the balance sheet um, from there we go to long-term liabilities for example long-term loans and following on from that shareholders equity so things share capital and retain earnings are things that are going to show there and if we total those we've got capital employed long-term liabilities plus capital employed will balance with net assets the construction of a balance sheet constructing a balance sheet let's have a look we'll be given some financial information about a firm here and asked to go away and construct a balance sheet it's unlikely you'll have to construct a whole balance sheet 
in the IB business and management exam but you may well have to fill in parts of it complete certain sections so let's have a look we've got some financial information assets and liabilities and a few other things happening in a business during the 2013 year everything's in thousands of dollars there show me constructing a balance sheet from scratch plug in our year we'll start with assets and fixed assets so again the structure is very 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 important you'll see different structures for different balance sheet but the structure for the IB business and management course IB business and management exams this is the required structure we'll start with fixed assets under our assets section go through and identify each and every single fixed asset that you can here out of our financial information we can see we've got property vehicles and other equipment appearing as fixed assets all we do is we transfer that information across to our fixed assets section of our balance sheet property of 200k vehicles 20 other equipment $30,000 we can't see any more let's move it on next section in the balance sheet current assets remember these are assets that are going to be used and sold by the business within 12 months so we've got cash creditors or debtors do you know which one's which yet critically important debtors are the people they are customers that owe us money these are an asset cash $25,000 debtors $70,000 the other key current asset is stocks it does not look like this firm uses stocks for whatever reason um, current liabilities moving it on identify any current liabilities within the financial information we've got creditors here and we've got a bank overdraft up the top as well just plug in those fingers uh, figures current liabilities done and dusted net current assets the next thing to go in I think we will leave this and just calculate it once we've got all our information plugged into the appropriate place in the balance sheet net assets comes next net assets followed by long-term liabilities so we're just getting the structure in place we're just getting the structure in place under long-term liabilities we have a long-term loan and we've got the benches there as well I will plug those in continuing on with our structure what goes next shareholders equity does we have got shareholders equity here as share capital and retain profit plug them in capital employed is our final amount here so we have got everything in place we've got the structure in place we've plugged in all our financial information we are going to have to go through and do some calculations now right our fixed assets total to $250,000 property plus vehicles plus other equipment our only fixed assets 250 current assets cash and debtors we will sum them as well current liabilities creditors and bank overdraft these are things we owe we'll sum those and current net current assets will be uh, the difference between the two net current assets $95,000 minus 70,000 $25,000 net assets net current assets and if we total our fixed assets plus our net current assets we've got our net assets 275 long term liabilities we'll sum those 50 plus 50 100 shareholders equity we're going to sum these two things underneath there share capital and retain earnings 175 and if we 
add up our long-term liabilities and our shareholders' equity, we've got our capital employed, 275. And funnily enough, capital employed balances with net assets. Our balance sheet works. Uh, again, pretty easy. The calculations are not too difficult. It's just knowing the structure, knowing how to calculate a few things. You'll have plenty of opportunity to practice in the um, activities and exam practice question uh, embedded in the ibbusinessmanagement.com website. And quite common, the uses and limitations of a balance sheet will be asked in exam type questions. Let's have a look at the uses. Show me. Show me. We can see immediately whether a firm is liquid or not because we can assess their working capital figures straight away. So we can have a look. The information is right there in front of us. The difference between current assets and current liabilities is given as net current assets. We know that net current assets is working capital. We can then assess whether there is short-term liquidity within the business or short-term illiquidity. Show me. The structure of assets can be analyzed within the balance sheet as well. So if we can see an increase in fixed assets from year to year, this is definitely going to indicate an expansion or perhaps we see a significant increase in stock showing up in the balance sheet and that's going to be indicative of over trading. Show me. Show me. Capital structure can be analyzed so we can see the sources of finance. Are they using shareholders capital? Is it coming from debentures? What are the current liabilities? The firm's capital employed can give an indication of its size and quite likely, most probably, the higher a firm's capital employed, the greater its market value tends to be. So very useful financial information can be gleaned from the balance sheet. There are limitations though, and you must be aware of these limitations and be prepared to discuss them in any evaluation type question. Show me. Show me. Right, there's static documents, they are frozen in time. Right. One period can be very different to subsequent periods. Just be aware of that. Things change in businesses all the time. The balance sheet is static at any one. Show me. Show me. Now the figures given are at best only accurate estimates of the value of assets and liabilities. Somebody is going out there and assessing the worth of an asset, assessing exactly how much um, the liabilities are as well. So the market value of an asset is not going to necessarily be the same as its book value. The market value may be higher or lower than the current book value. Show me. Show me. And not all assets, especially the intangible assets and the key value of human capital within an organization are included in the balance sheet. Sometimes we do see those intangible assets showing up. Most often we don't and we never ever see um, a value placed on the staff, key staff to the running of the business, the functioning, the profitability of a business aren't included in the balance sheet.